Hi, good morning. I'm Matt. And I'm Randy. And you just tuned into the Morning Devotion. Now, I know we say it all the time, but it doesn't make it any less more important. We're okay. here to encourage you through the Word so that you can be strong in the faith. And live victoriously in Christ. Amen. Because I want to be strong in the faith. Amen. And live victorious in Christ. Amen. <laughs> We're going to take a look real quick at something that I, I would call <sighs> portional misquotation of scripture heavenly father lord i ask in the name of jesus that you would help us to rightly divide the word of truth yes. that your spirit would speak to us when we hear things that are just a little bit off and allow us to lord have the skills necessary to dig into your word and discover the truth of your word for there we find the words that lead to life I pray that you would anoint, Lord, the devotion this morning and put your hand upon us as we share your word. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 What if somebody said, don't go, and all you heard was go? Mm -hmm. Two totally different things that are being said. Go and don't go. Big difference. I would dent go. I would go. So there's there's something like that that often happens in scripture. I, I look back to uh, an, an early time in my Christianity when somebody said in the first book of John, the first chapter, or no, first chapter of the book of John, where it said, To many as those who believe to them, he gave the power to become. And this book was based on that portion of that scripture. And then it went out to outline the, the power to become whatever thing that you want. And I thought to myself, I think there's more to that verse. I think it's the power to become the sons of God. Not whatever you want, but the sons of God. But a whole book was written based on a portion of scripture inappropriately applied. Yep. And in life... This is nothing new. The enemy, yep. the devil, <laughs> was in the garden twisting God's word yep. for Eve. Trying to turn the word around to mean something that he wanted it to mean instead of putting it right to mean yes. what God wants it to mean. People twist scripture all the time because they don't want their life to fit into God's word. Instead, they try to make God's word fit their life. <laughs> And that's where we get false doctrines. Yes. People often ask us about being Church of God. Well, Church of God, Assemblies of God, these things that, that we are, are members of it is because we find that the doctrinal standards, the teachings, yeah. the biblical background and foundation that the Church of God is built on is agreeing with mm -hmm. Scripture. Yes. It's it's about the scripture. It's about the good Amen. news. It's about Jesus. It's about reaching people for Christ. And that's something that we can believe in. That's something that we can follow. God's word is, is mighty. Amen. And Timothy was exhorted by the Apostle Paul to do this. He said, study to show thyself approved unto God. We keep reading. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But... But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. Listen, listening to vain and profane babblings, that blah, 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 blah. <laughs> it, it will increase ungodliness. Yep. You should listen to the word of God. And their word will eat as doth a canker, of whom is Hymenius and Philentus, who concerning the truth have erred saying that the resurrection is past already, and overthrow, overthrow the faith of some. Never, nonetheless, nevertheless, the foundations of God standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his, and let every one that nameth the name of Christ, Christ depart, depart from, from iniquity. iniquity. Even 2,000 years ago, Paul was having to contend and warn Peter that mm -hmm. there's somebody who's who's twisting scripture yep. to, to produce 
something that is not godly because it leads to ungodliness. Yeah. If your church is not preaching the gospel and instead it's just all about prosperity and positivity and good thinking and not sticking to what the scripture says, perhaps you should find a different church. Now, I know that's kind of harsh, and, and, but the, the fact is, if, if it's teaching portional scriptures and taking them out of context, then definitely you should either speak to someone or find another church where God's word is preached. And that's the reason that we teach the way we teach, verse yeah. by verse, in context, looking at the circumstances of who God was talking to, who the scriptures are written to, what it was trying to say at that time, yeah. and then taking it and applying it to our lives. This is what, in John chapter 8, verse 31, this is what it says. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, if you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. What is that little symbol right there with the dot and the colon? No, I don't know what it's called. It's called, called a semicolon. It's, like, it's a, it all right, Don, Don and Silla, it's a dot <laughs> with a little comma underneath it. I think that's called a semicolon, whatever. This is, it means the thought continues. It goes on to say, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Amen. This is, this is it. So many people quote, you should know the truth and the truth will make you free. The truth makes you free. They break it down. But not just any truth will make okay. you free. Not whatever truth that you want to find would make you free. Amen. But there was a verse before that that is attached that says, Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If, if you continue in my, my word, word then you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. If you are his disciple, if you continue his word, Amen. then the truth, you'll know it, and it'll set you free. Amen. It'll set you free Amen. from sin. Make sure that whenever somebody quotes a scripture, look it up for yourself. Take some time. Read the surrounding thing. Make sure that what they're saying is right. You should be able to do that. Mm -hmm. you're, an, you're, you're an adult. Look it up. <laughs> Randy's going to close us out with a verse from the book of Psalms. Psalms and then we're going to finish out. <laughs> it is Psalms 19, starting in verse 7. I'm only going to do verse 7 through 11. Um, you guys can go back and read the whole psalm. Just like I just said. <laughs> Here we go. It says, The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. Amen. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. Amen. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold. Amen. Yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them your servant is warned. Amen. And in keeping them, there is great reward. Amen. And speaking of keeping them, keep, keep a, a praise, praise song in your heart. heart. And, and rejoice in the Lord, Lord always. And, and again, again, I say rejoice. We'll see you tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. God bless. Bye-bye.